Um, so this is a present. I'm Ryan, Ryan McGrady, uh, user of Rhododendrites, uh, active on Wikipedia and Commons. And I'm going to present today on a subject that is about kind of the spirit of Commons uh, and the limitations or the community's tolerance for copyleft enforcement. Uh, so we'll get to all these terms uh, as I keep going. Um, let's get started. So first of all, who here has uploaded original work to Commons ever? All right, good on you. Uh, how many of you have seen that work used outside of the wiki world? All right, cool. How many of you have seen work that you created used wrong outside of the wiki world? Maybe it doesn't credit you. Maybe it doesn't say where you know what the license is. Doesn't follow all the rules. All right. So, um, Ellie, you had your hand up. What did you do? So, like one of the things I did was like I uploaded on election maps and like people reposted on like social media, mm -hmm. so, like literally like reposting the Wikipedia itself. Yeah. Uh, and while it technically doesn't credit to me, I also intend to release all my original work under a public domain license. So okay. I don't really care. Sure. Yeah, and I think that I don't really care kind of carries over to most of us who come to an event like this where we are donating something because we want it to be used. So we Wikipedia is free content. There we go. Uh, it's one of the the almighty five pillars of Wikipedia that you know that when you, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Um, this is not, it's not muted. Is it okay now? Yeah, it's yeah, okay. Um, okay, so one of the, the, the pillars of Wikipedia, everything is free content. People know that when you need an image to use on your blog, on your community activist website, on in your book, whatever you need, that the stuff on Wikipedia is free and you can use it. We require that people use things like Creative Commons licenses. So the idea of the Creative Commons license is that copyright, which all of your photographs have by default in this country and pretty much in most places, um, is, is a very blunt instrument. And so Creative Commons exists in order to say, I want people to use this work without fearing of fearing getting sued. And so here are some specific ways that you can use this work uh, and you'll be doing so legally. So you're giving up some rights. Most commonly, we leave it at you have to credit me. That's kind of the only right that we retain. We retain the copyright. If you use it, you have to credit. Um, but the thing is, a lot of places don't do that. So I also upload things to uh, Wikipedia and Wiki Commons and see them used all the time. Photo of the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco that just says the Palace of Fine Arts. There it is again on some craft chocolate experience websites. No credit at all. Here's the maroon bells in, uh, in um, Aspen. Um, it's the Aspen Times used it and just said courtesy photo. Here's AOL. AOL is a giant company. Well, I mean, used to be anyway. Uh, should know better than to just say uh, nothing. It says nothing. 30 Hudson Yards from Hudson Commons, New York, New York. No photo credit at all. So people don't know. It's sometimes maybe it's laziness. Sometimes it's malicious. But most of the time, people just don't understand what in the world a copyright uh, a copy left license is. All right. Um, so this is not true of everybody. We've established that in this room, most of the people who donate their stuff do so because they want it to be used. And we're not typically filing lawsuits if somebody screws up. Sometimes, you know, maybe we'll send a message saying, hey, you forgot to credit me. Maybe you can do that. But that's usually kind of the end of it. We're, do we're donating stuff because we want people to use it. But that's not true of everybody. There is, in fact, a business model that has emerged whereby people exploit the you can use this signal of Creative Commons licenses and uh, upload lots of Creative Commons images with a complicated attribution statement in order to sue people who then misuse it, either lacking attribution or making some minor mistake in that attribution. This has been called copy left trolling, inspired by the term copyright trolling, um, where people, well, that's a whole other thing we wouldn't even get, get into. Um, it's sort of a bad faith use of 
free licenses in order to build a business on license enforcement. Uh, so, all right. I'm going to take you through a couple of examples. Having taken meticulous care to make sure that the attribution is correct, uh, there have been a couple of really high profile examples of this. So this first example uh, is a user who used low cost labor around the world through free working sites to generate thousands and thousands and thousands of really just kind of generic stock images. He didn't even take the photos. He paid people a pittance to create them, sign the copyright over, upload it to as many free content websites as possible, and then had a business of sending out thousands and thousands of, of uh, uh, damages demands letters saying, you failed to incorporate all the elements of my license, therefore you owe me money. It was a business model. It wasn't in order to share with the commons. It was to make a profit. Uh, so for example, he required linking to three different URLs when you credit him for this image. Uh, it also made sure that you had to list any changes that you made uh, and his full name. Uh, and if you were lacking any piece of that, then you would get a letter uh, asking for money. So this even got some news attention, um, writing about this person in particular. And when it came to commons, we deleted them. So they had all been uploaded. We want to protect people who come to commons to, to uh, know that if they use the material that you see there, that you can do so freely without worrying that about this kind of uh, a, a gotcha lawsuit. And in the end, they were just kind of lousy um, stock photos and nothing of great importance was lost. So uh, that's not the only example though, there's another one. So uh, there is a rock photographer who again, got some attention, Corey Doctorow is kind of a common thread through all of these, drawing attention to this uh, uh, abuse of Creative Commons, um, who would upload his photos of concerts and again, send out lots and lots of uh, letters demanding money from people who did not follow the exact text of his attribution, which required linking to his website in a very specific way. So for example, there's Luda. We have a photo of Ludacris on Commons that this photographer uploaded. When it came time to deal with this, that we didn't delete the images, we had this kind of novel solution, which is to incorporate in a, a really awkward watermark into the image itself and, re and upload it over all of his images. So now, in order to use one of these images, you have to download this whole thing. And then if you crop it out, like, you know, you're asking for it at that point, but this tells you exactly how you have to credit it and it communicates that you will probably face a lawsuit if you don't do it exactly like that. Uh, creates lots of problems uh, to some degree because Wikipedia does not want to have this in there. Uh, yeah. How would links work that they want to lie? It's a good question. So, uh, because it has the, the full URL in this case, this person did not require three links. This person just wanted their URL to be printed out. Uh, and so it's just, a, you know, Creative Commons gives you a lot of leeway for what you can request when it comes to attribution. But okay, so uh, there are businesses which facilitate this kind of business model. This is called Pixie, P-I-X-S-Y. Pixie crawls the web, finds instances of your images on the web that it thinks may or may not be used uh, out of accordance with the licensing and gives you this dashboard where you can see people using it by country. You can find places that use multiple versions of it. You can like, there's just all sorts of tools to make it very easy. And then at some point you, you can like go through and see, here's an image that I took. Here's the, uh, the URL that's using it. Um, is it a commercial or non-commercial website, which is a very ambiguous term in this case. And then all you have to do is click a button and Pixie initiates the process of demanding money and getting their lawyers involved. So it really lowers the bar for someone who wants to make money off of copyright, copyleft enforcement um, to just click a button. You can click 10, 20, 30 buttons at a time, initiate all these lawsuits just in a matter of a few minutes. So let's step back. You might be saying, uh, playing devil's advocate in the case of this presentation, that well, Commons can't really say how you can enforce copyright. That's a thing that's a legal thing. What business do we have? Uh, like these, like AO should know better when it comes to crediting people. 
Like they should know the requirements of Creative Commons. And this is entirely valid. Um, I would push back and say, I would quote Creative Commons itself, uh, saying license enforcement as business model is a perversion of the founding ideals of Creative Commons, which gets pretty explicit as to what they think about this practice, that it's an abuse of the spirit of Creative Commons to allow people to use things, to want people to use things in order just to exploit them uh, on the other end. Some other free content communities have taken broad action. Flickr actually updated its community guidelines saying that if you post uh, uh, stuff in our commons section, you must give people an opportunity to fix an attribution mistake before you sue them. It's not, doesn't have any legal teeth, them doing that, but it limits who can participate in the Flickr community. And so a lot of the folks that we just saw, their stuff has been taken down off of Flickr because they do not allow an opportunity to fix the issue. Um, but lest we assume that Commons always comes down hard on these issues, there is uh, there have been many other cases where people have um, engaged in behavior that some have called copyleft trolling and some have called just kind of aggressive copyright enforcement, trying to search for the um, the the line there. Um, and there was a recent case of one of the most prolific creators of featured pictures. Um, who had a lot of complaints from people saying, I used this image, I found it on Wikipedia, and then I got this letter demanding money. Um, lots of discussion came out of that. No consensus for anything. So we still have all the images. The only thing that came out of it was a guideline, uh, which we can use later. Disclosure, I wrote the guideline and would like all of your feedback on it sometime afterwards. Um, but this just tries to lay down some, some ways to try to um, determine if something should be considered copyleft trolling. So like, do they give an opportunity to fix the, the error? Um, do they distinguish between complete absence of attribution and just a slight mistake? Like these kinds of clues presenting precedent, possible uh, interventions. So finally, I wanna introduce, uh, I take a different view of this. So Hokayoka is a term from automobile manufacturing, Toyota in particular, and the term was originally idiot proofing, but now it kind of turned into error proofing to be a little nicer. So it's a design concept where, for example, if you have a microwave at home, you cannot turn it on while the door is open. This is idiot proofing the microwave. Uh, and if in order to idiot proof, I should say error proof, because uh, I'm not gonna call you somebody who doesn't understand Creative Commons an idiot because it is frankly kind of complex. Um, it takes that principle um, from manufacturing and we can apply it in other design scenarios. And I would argue that this is another dimension that we should be thinking about, not just on the uh, taking action on the offenders and determining who the copyleft trolls are and banning them or deleting their work or adding these uh, watermarks, but also we should be making it as hard as possible for people to screw up Creative Commons licenses. And we're currently very bad at this. So let's think about the ways that you would find an image on Wikipedia. You go to the Indiana State House article, you see an image there. It's just an image. There's no information about that image there aside from what it depicts. Maybe you click it. Maybe you see the media viewer here. Uh, and you see down there in the corner is this CCBYSA that nobody knows what that means. Nobody knows they're supposed to click it and read a whole legal text before using this. All you see is the image. We have a friendly download button there. We have the, the name of it. It's, it's just there. Why is it so easy <laughs> for people to misuse the stuff that we upload? Well, what are some things we can do? One thing, very controversial idea. Is Dominic here? Dominic's not in here. Um, this is something that Dominic had proposed years ago, um, which was to include image credits in articles. And it gets a lot of pushback because the community kind of says, well, we don't want to credit individual authors of content. Uh, on the other hand, it's, the, it's a, a, a gap in our typical verifiability and cita citing sources policies to have an image where you have to go to another website, create a uh, wiki commons, in order to know its provenance and who took it and where it came from. So you could do something like just have a citation, but let's not stop there. You could have a pop-up when clicking an image while logged out. 
this is kind of heavy handed. If you're logged out, being the people that probably are, are most likely to be using the, this stuff, you could just have a, would you like to use this outside of Wikipedia? You click yes, you, get a, you generate exactly the text that you need to use. We can have a giant banner in Media Viewer. Rather than a little tiny text in the corner, we could have the Indiana State Capitol and then a big banner saying, I mean, this is a little heavy handed, but it is illegal to use this image without following these instructions. If you want to use this outside of Wikipedia, you must use this, this attribution exactly. So for a lot of us that upload, this doesn't actually matter, but this makes it so that our users of these images are not falling prey to the people who form a business model out of copyright enforcement. One more. Disable right-click saving and require clicking on a download button with a pop-up. So the, there's a little download button in the bottom right. Uh, so this is similar to what Flickr had done before, where you can't just right-click and save. There's a step you have to go through. So in this case, click the download button and say, oh, are you downloading this because you want to use it outside of Wikipedia? Well, here are the rules for that. So to some extent, like, it's hard to blame people for messing this up. It's not at all obvious. Outside of people who go to conferences like these, what you're supposed to do to properly attribute a Creative Commons image. And that creates problems with these folks who, are, who have this business model. So um, I don't think I have, have very much time left, but it, this is you know, a big what else uh, that I guess I would leave you to think about and perhaps share on that copyleft trolling guideline uh, talk page to say what other kinds of design interventions can we use to error-proof Creative Commons image use on uh, on WikiCommons. Um, very important documenting these <laughs> that I use those images from those folks. Uh, and thank you.